and welcome to Ask the Expert, an informational short video to address an important topic in the world today, thrombosis and COVID-19. I'm Sam Perry, Campaign Manager for the International Society on Thrombosis and Hemostasis and the World Thrombosis Day Campaign. I'm pleased to be joined by Dr. Jeffrey Weitz, President-Elect of the ISTH and Professor of Medicine in Biochemistry and Biomedical Sciences at McMaster University in Canada. Dr. Weitz is a well-known global thrombosis expert and a founding member of the WTD Steering Committee. Dr. Weitz, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Sam. So COVID-19 is a worldwide pandemic that's affecting all of us. And we recognize what a challenging time of uncertainty this can be for those affected by thrombosis. Today, Dr. Weitz is here to discuss the correlation between COVID-19 and blood clots and share what patients, survivors, and healthcare professionals need to know. We wanna say thank you to the many individuals who submitted questions for today's video. Before we get started, as an important note, we are providing general information only. For specific questions regarding your healthcare, please consult your healthcare professional. Okay, let's get started. For our first topic, we want to highlight one of the most commonly asked questions that we've received over the last few weeks. Dr. Weitz, if you are a blood clot patient or survivor, are you considered high risk for contracting COVID-19? Uh, the answer to that question, Sam, is pretty easy. The answer is no. You're not considered at high risk for developing COVID-19. You're no more high risk for contracting the virus than anyone else. So you should practice the usual measures for physical distancing, avoid uh, at large crowds and all of that, but you're at no higher risk than anyone else. Well, I think that that is going to help a lot of the patients out there and the survivors out there and ease their mind. For our second question, is a patient with a clotting disorder more likely to suffer complications if they contract COVID-19? And if so, what would some of those potential complications be? Well, this is a moving target. We're learning more about COVID-19 every day. So what I could say today might change within the next few weeks, but what's emerging now is that blood clots deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism are actually quite common in the COVID population. And therefore, we are taking measures to prevent those blood clots. So virtually everybody that we are admitting to hospital with COVID-19, whether they're in the, on the wards or in the intensive care unit, they're all getting prevention to reduce the risk of uh, blood clots, deep vein thrombosis, DVT, or pulmonary embolism. Now, someone who's had a prior blood clot, they're at even higher risk, so prophylaxis in them is going to be paramount. Excellent. So our, our next question came, we've actually gotten quite a few of these questions. Um, if a patient is recovering from a pulmonary embolism with some residual lung damage, does having that residual lung damage from a pulmonary embolism put them at higher risk? Just because they've had a pulmonary embolism doesn't necessarily put them at higher risk for uh, getting COVID-19. But if they had COVID-19, a prior pulmonary embolism, if it produced some lung damage could put them at higher risk for the complications. So it's very important to, if you've had a pulmonary embolism and you're on treatment, keep on that treatment to reduce the risk of having another clot. And if you've had a pulmonary embolism in the past and you're now off treatment, make sure you tell your physician or tell the admitting physicians that you have had a prior clot, and for sure you should get prophylaxis when you're in hospital with COVID-19 or for any other uh, medical illness. Excellent. Well, actually, you kind of already answered my next question, which is great. So if somebody is a blood clot survivor and they're no longer taking anticoagulants, are they still at risk? And if they are, if they do acquire COVID-19, what should they say to their physician? 
Well, anyone who's had a prior blood clot, a deep vein thrombosis or a pulmonary embolism, they're always at risk for another clot if they're put in a high-risk situation. And COVID-19 infection is a high-risk situation. There's more and more evidence that it is often associated with a hypercoagulable state. That means the blood is prone to excessive clotting. So for those people who are now off anticoagulants, it's very important that they mention that to their uh, admitting physician, and they should certainly be considered for prophylaxis uh, to prevent another clot unless they have uh, bleeding. Okay, thank you so much. At the World Thrombosis Day campaign, you know that we talk a lot about asking your healthcare provider for a VTE risk assessment. When should that patient ask for one? And if a patient, what should a patient expect from their healthcare provider? Like, do they need to bring specific paperwork or do they need to say specific things for that? Well, it's very important that any patient who's going into the hospital tell the healthcare provider that they've had a prior blood clot and they should ask for VTE risk assessment. And with COVID-19 in particular, a prior history of a blood clot is even more of an impetus to indicate that they need thromboprophylaxis. So it's important to always tell your health healthcare provider that you've had a prior clot and to insist on VTE risk assessment if you are hospitalized because of medical or surgical uh, indications. Excellent. So for our final question, as people are practicing physical distancing and may also be working from home, do you have any tips that you can share on what people can do from home to prevent blood clots? Yeah, I think that's really important as we're at home more, uh, there's a tendency to do less, but we need to stay active. And so there are all kinds of things that you can do at home to keep up an uh, exercise regimen. There are videos and uh, there are online yoga exercises, other exercises that you could do. And for those who are not uh, confined entirely to the house, get out and go for a walk. You can still practice physical distancing even as you're walking. So keep active, keep the blood flowing. That will help to reduce your risk of BTE. These are all great reminders and we completely agree that now more than ever, it's important to keep life flowing. Um, Dr. Weitz, you've shared some great information for us today, and we really appreciate it. Do you have anything else that you think is important to share with patients today? Well, I think for patients, this is such an important topic. I would encourage them to go to the WTD website to look for information and to the ISTH website. There's all kinds of patient information there that they can access and, uh, and, and take into account. Thank you so much for those reminders, Dr. Weitz. Well, that's all the time that we have today. And we wanna say thank you so much for your expertise and your guidance. We appreciate you taking time out of your super busy schedule for us. And please know that this information will be beneficial to everyone. And also everybody out there, please know that we will get through this difficult time together. Stay tuned in, stay well, and tune in often for the most recent updates.